15 minute or less lecture series, Human Anatomy, Chapter 5, The Integumentary System. Functions of the skin, the main organ of the integumentary system, includes thermal regulation through sweating and adjusting blood flow to the skin. Blood reservoir turns out about 8 to 10 percent of the total blood is found in our dermis. Protection, it helps to protect us by providing a barrier that prevents microbes from getting in, allows us to bump against things, have minor abrasions, and not have our underlying tissues injured, or heat injuring us, or chemicals, and also some protection through pigment of UV light. Cutaneous sensations. Our skin is very sensuous, has touch or tactile sensations, temperature sensations, tickle, itch, so forth. Skin also can excrete material, primarily sweat and water, and heat. And it can absorb some lipid-soluble materials, some medications do with that. And also it's involved in the synthesis of vitamin D. The UV that we're exposed to activates a vitamin D precursor found in the skin. So the integumentary system includes the epidermis and dermis of the skin. Underlying that is the subcutaneous layer, primarily composed of adipose tissue. That's the integumentary system. Below that, we have the deep fascia, the connective tissue that helps to bind the integumentary system to the underlying structures like muscle. So here is the epidermis, the superficial layer of the skin. Below that is the dermis, which is deep to the epidermis. The dermis houses many structures that are important for the functions of the skin. The dermis gets broken down into the papillary layer that's directly below the skin, I mean the epidermis, and deep to that, the reticular layer where many structures are embedded. And then deep to the dermis is the subcutaneous layer where many blood vessels are passing through and is primarily adipose tissue. There are four kinds of cells in the epidermis, keratinocytes, melanocytes, intraepidermal macrophage cells, and tactile epithelial cells. The keratinocytes make up the majority of the epidermis. They are arranged in many, many layers. They produce, over time, the protein keratin, which makes these cells very tough and very resistant to forces to provide protection for us. And they also produce lamellar granules, which help to make our skin water repellent. Melanocytes. Melanocytes are skin pigment-producing cells. They produce the pigment melanin that then gets transferred to the keratinocytes. Melanin, melanin then helps to protect our cell's DNA from UV light. Uh, the intraepidermal macrophage cells are immune cells that will engulf microbes that make it into deeper layers of the epidermis through the process of phagocytosis. These cell, cells stay where they are. And then the tactile epithelial cells help to detect the sense of touch. And they are a sensory receptor that then makes contact with a sensory neuron, so that information that can be transmitted to the uh, nervous system. They're also known as the type 1 cutaneous mechanoreceptor. So the epidermis comes in many layers. The first layer is, and deepest layer, is the stratum bacilli. So here is the stratum bacilli lying on the basement membrane. Uh, they are a single roll of cells that are filled with the keratin intermediate filaments. And all cell division occurs here. All keratinocytes are made here. You also can find on this layer the melanocytes and the tactile epithelial cells. Next layer is stratum spinosum. Stratum spinosum is made up of about 8 to 10 layers of keratinocytes. Here, the intermediate filaments are forming tight uh, junctions and desmosomes with each other, making them look a little spiny in shape. So we want these cells to hold together against forces. Also found here is the intraepidermal macrophage cells. Uh, and also the melanocytes send projections to these cells and deposit the pigment melanin into the keratinocytes. Above that is stratum granulosum. Stratum granulosum is three to five cells. Uh, the cells here are starting to die, starting to enter apoptosis. The keratin intermediate filaments are being broken down to produce keratin, and the lamellar granules are being released to produce a water repellent exfoliant. 
Above that, in thick skin and thick skin only, is stratum lucidum, or six layers of clear flat cells that are officially dead. Above that is stratum corneum. Stratum corneum can vary in size, but it averages 25 to 30 layers of cells. These cells are flat, they are dead, they are superficial, they are open to the open space. They are just plasma membranes filled with keratin. And sometimes they thicken, forming what's called a callus, and friction is what causes the uh, increased cell production in those locations. So new cells are pushed up from stratum bacilli. So all new cells are made at stratum bacilli and then deposited above it in stratum spinosum. And that pushes the cells above that up higher and those above that up higher and those above that closer and closer to the surface. And then the cells will pass through these various strata. So here is a view of the epidermis, stratum corneum, stratum lucidum, meaning this is thick skin, stratum granulosum, stratum spinosum, and down at the bottom, stratum bacilli that have been attached to the basement membrane that's attached to the dermis below it. Uh, the dermis, the dermis is primarily made of dense irregular connective tissue and areolar tissue. It is much thicker than the epidermis. It includes a variety of cells, including fibroblasts that produce the protein fiber collagen in the uh, dermis, and also many immune surveillance cells looking for pathogens. It also has blood vessels, nerves, uh, glands, and fall hair follicles. The more superficial region of the dermis is called the papillary region. It forms these uh, little hills that stick up, push up toward the epidermis, that intercalates with the epidermis. And this increases contact between the layers and helps to prevent them from separating. These uh, little hills, these dermal papillae, also have capillaries, blood capillaries, that will bring nutrients to the epidermis as well as they have corpuscles of touch for the sensation of touch and free nerve endings for other sensations, temperature, pain, itch, and so forth. The papillary region is primarily made of areolar connective tissue. Below well, that is the reticular region. The reticular region is much tougher. It is made primarily of dense irregular connective tissue. Some collagen fibers, but primarily uh, some elastic fibers and also collagen fibers. They allow the cell skin to resist forces in all directions. Here we find blood vessels, nerves, hair follicles, sebaceous glands, and sudiferous glands. Uh, it turns out that in thick skin and thick skin only, the dermal papillae protrude so far up that they actually form ridges. These ridges we call fingerprints. These ridges have many, many sweat glands, many, many corpuscles of touch to increase the touch sensation in our palms of our hands and fingers and soles of our feet and toes. And these also, these ridges help to increase the grip of the hand or foot when we're grabbing things. Uh, it turns out that the skin color is dependent on the amount of melanin produced by the melanocytes. They can increase production in isolated areas, forming freckles and age spots, or produce increased melanin all throughout the skin to give the different shades of skin color that humans have. Occasionally, melanocytes become cancerous and form benign overgrowths that we call moles. Other things that can give you a clue about a person's health can be seen in the colors of the skin. Cyanotic or bluish colored skin and mucous membranes can mean that someone has a lack of oxygen in those areas. Jaundice or a yellowish color of the skin and also the white of eyes can be a sign of liver disease. Arrhythmia or redness of the skin could be caused by just blushing or it could be caused by an injury and exposure to heat or an inflammation or allergic reaction. And then pallor or paleness of the skin could be caused by shock, someone going to the shock or anemia. Then there's a the subcutaneous layer that is deep to the dermis. The subcutaneous layer is not part of the skin. It has collagen fibers and also to attach it to the dermis. And also it has lots and lots of adipose tissue to store fat, and provide cushioning for underlying structures. It also has many blood vessels passing through it and nerves. Um, also found in the region between the dermis and the subcutaneous layer are the laminated corpuscles that detect pressure pushing on. So if something pushes on you lightly or pushes on very hard, you can tell the difference because of laminated corpuscles. Uh, the subcutaneous layer allows for shock absorption and insulation. 
Hair. Hair is an accessory structure. It has limited protection. It guards the scalp from some injury in UV, increases a little bit of heat loss. Eyelashes and eyebrows protect from things going into the eyes. Hair also has its own touch receptors, the hair root plexus, that allow us to know when our hair has been removed. Uh, not only the hair, you have the shaft, which is the superficial portion of the hair that we can see, and the root that is embedded in the skin itself and penetrates into the dermis. Um, so there are three layers to the hair shaft and root. The innermost layer, the medulla, outside of that is the cortex, and outside of that is the cuticle. The, then we have the hair follicle that surrounds the hair root. It has its own layers. The epithelial root sheath made of an internal root sheath and an external root sheath and a dermal root sheath, which is a densening of the dermis around the hair follicle. Here is another view, a transverse uh, cut of a hair, showing you the uh, various layers of the hair itself and the hair follicle itself. Uh, at the very base of the hair follicle and hair root is what's called the hair matrix. The hair matrix are germinal cells that are dividing and producing more hair cells. Turns out these are keratinocytes as well as melanocytes. The keratinocytes make new cells that push up and push the cells above them up and up and up. Also found here is the papal of the hair. This area contains areolar connective tissue and blood vessels and capillaries to supply nutrients to the hair matrix. Again, the cells grow from the hair matrix and get pushed up further and further and further up. This is why you can cut the hair and it'll still continue to grow. Uh, associated with the hair are sebaceous glands. Sebaceous glands are oil glands that secrete oil into the hair uh, follicle. There are the erector pili muscles. These muscles attach the hair follicle to the um, superficial layer of the dermis. And when they contract, they form goosebumps. And then the hair root plexus. Free nerve endings that wrap around the hair follicle, and if the hair is moved, we can detect that. Sebaceous glands, the oil glands, secrete their oils through hollow concretion. This oil is called sebum, helps prevent the skin and hair from becoming brittle and dried out, uh, prevents evaporation, keeps the skin soft and pliable, inhibits the bacterial growth. There is also the sudiferous glands, the sweat glands, the Eccrine sweat glands that are found in all skin and the apocrine sweat glands only found where we have secondary hairs, pubic hair or uh, armpit hair. Uh, eccrine glands, sweat glands, secrete their sweat through American secretion, aka exocytosis. Sweat produced is the sweat we are used to, normal sweat, important for thermal regulation and some emotional sweating. The apocrine sweat glands, however, are only found in the armpit and pubic areas and they produce a viscous substance that's eaten by bacteria causing body odor and are often screening stuff from sexual excitement. Thrumous glands are found in the ear canal. They produce cerumen which mixes with the sebum and then produces a waterproof sealant that protects our ear canals from foreign bodies. Uh, the nails. The nails are also keratinized cells. So this the nail itself is made of keratinocytes packaged differently. You have the nail matrix where the cells are dividing and pushing the cells forward into the nail root, which then goes and forms the nail body and eventually the free edge of the nails. The eponychium is the part of the uh, epidermis that is lying on top of the nail. And uh, the hyponychium is where underneath the nail's free edge that secures the nail to the fingertip. The Lunula is the whitish area that you can see on your nails. Burns. There are three main kinds of burns. First degree burns that only damage the epidermis. Second degree burns that go into the dermis, often leading to the formation of blisters as the dermis and epidermis separate. And then uh, third degree burns that go all the way into the subcutaneous layer. These burns can be very severe and lead to nerve damage. Uh, aging, wrinkles is caused by changes in the amount of proteins produced. Follows, collagen fibers aren't being replaced as often, so they become stiff, they break apart, form tangles, elastic fibers are less elastic. Less immune cells, decreased function of the glands in the skin, the skin becomes thinner, more susceptible to damage and disease. So basically getting old sucks. Skin cancer can form in skin. This can be caused by UV radiation, leading to melanoma from melanocytes, basal cell carcinoma from the uh, basal cells, and the squamous cell carcinoma. Hope you uh, found that interesting.